Hello and welcome to this weekly look at the night sky, where I go through what you can see and how you can see it. Each week I go through another constellation and tonight we'll have a look at Orion. Orion belongs to the winter night sky and it's a good place to start when going stargazing because it's easy to find and once you've found it you can use it to find the other constellations around it. But the reason why this is my favorite constellation is because it shows us the life cycles of stars like nowhere else. More on that later. Orion was a hunter in Greek mythology and the easiest way to find him is to find the three stars that make up his belt. These three stars are quite distinct because of their brightness and the line they form. And in my experience, more people know Orion's belt than Orion himself. Once you've found the belt, it's easy to find his feet, these two bright stars underneath the belt, and his shoulders, the two bright stars above the belt. His head is more dim and a bit small, but then this was never the feature he was most known for. Being a hunter, he is equipped with some weapons, most notably his dagger found here, beneath the belt. A word of warning though. Most people don't think of a dagger when they see this, and it can cause quite a bit of sniggering. To the right he's holding up a bow, or a shield, right here. And above his head he's swinging a club, right here. Now, both of these weapons will not be visible unless you're located somewhere dark. That is, far away from major cities and other sources of light in the dark. So. How does this constellation show us the life cycles of stars? Well, let's look a bit more carefully at Orion's dagger. In a dark sky, once your eyes have grown used to the darkness, you'll notice that the dagger is actually a bit fuzzy. With a simple pair of binoculars, you'll be able to see that what may at first have looked like three stars in a small vertical line, now looks more like a little cloud. This is the Orion Nebula, the closest star-forming region to Earth, and therefore the easiest to see. In this cloud, stars are being formed right now, about a thousand of them. In fact, the first stars have already been formed, and it's their light that makes this otherwise dark cloud visible to us. By the way, it takes a few hundred thousand years to form a star. So you won't miss anything if you don't get out and see this tonight. On the other end of the star life spectrum, we have the left shoulder star called Betelgeuse. This is a star at the end of its life. Like most stars reaching the end, it has grown to become a giant and its surface has cooled to become more red. You can actually see that the star is sort of orange and in fact, every time you see a star with a yellow, orange or red color to it, it'll be a star that is at the end. Now, when I say it is giant, that word really doesn't come close to describing the monstrous size of this object. In rough numbers, you would need almost a billion copies of the sun to fill it up. Mind you, the sun, a minor star, could itself hold more than a million copies of the Earth. This unbelievably large star, which still looks like a dot from here because of the distance, could explode any moment now. In fact, because it takes light about 650 years to reach us from this star, it could already have exploded and the light is headed towards us. We can't know when it's going to happen, only that it'll happen soon like probably within the next million years or so. But when it happens, this supernova, as we call an exploding star, will outshine the moon in the sky. That's it for tonight. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, click subscribe. I hope to see you next week. And until then, clear skies.